yell, yell, hey, Erica and Jason with Time to Shrink, and it's time to... Drink. It's time to drink, y'all. We're like pros at this now. <laughs> we are. We've got it down. All right, y'all. Tonight we are doing amaretto based drinks. I have had so, so many, many requests, so many requests for making a low carb amaretto, and I we, we went through were... multiple recipes that we found, lots of different people's ideas and our yep. ideas. We kind of combined we some things. Got our own little twist to it. teach you how to make amaretto it's going to take just a few minutes literally yep. that is it and then we are going to make a few drinks with it one of them being this gorgeous martini it has amaretto and it is delicious you're going to want to make this and you know literally make a martini you know yeah make jason a martini. loves to make a martini <laughs> and literally amaretto is the easiest liqueur that we've made to oh, date. Yes. By far oh, the yes. easiest. I was surprised how easy it was. We so, went through a bunch of trials to figure out what we oh, thought worked the best, but I think y'all are going to really love this. Okay, let's do it. All right, y'all. So the first thing we're going to do is teach you how to make amaretto. It's super simple. It's so simple. I can't even okay. believe it. So what you're going to do first is you need to make your low carb syrup. Your low carb syrup is what's making it low carb. So to make the low carb syrup, Generally, what we do is we use allulose and water. Allulose melts really quickly into water and it stays that way. A lot, a lot, a lot of the sugar-free sweeteners will melt in water with heat, but it precipitates back out into like crystal forms and it doesn't stay and it won't work after the first like 12 hours to 24 hours. Other than the mojitos, those were really cool with the crystals. In yeah, there. it looked really cool in the mojitos. <laughs> but, but other than that. Anyways, we found out in our research that allulose was the trick. Well, for amaretto, you need a little more than allulose. You need, you need some kind of brown sweetener, and we found that the sucre and gold works really, really well. I'm going to take you back to the stove and show you how simple and quickly this comes together. I have my pot over about a medium high heat. There goes a cup of water. This is a cup of allulose, and we're going in with a fourth a cup of sucre and gold. You could also use swerve brown sugar. Both of these will not precipitate back out at this amount. So all we're gonna do is stir this until it's clear and everything has melted completely. There's no more crystals. This literally takes about a minute, y'all. Like, I'm not even kidding. This melts down so quickly. All right, so that literally took you like a minute to melt yeah, that down. Yeah, it literally like, melts down shocked. in about a minute. Okay, like, now here's where our recipe varies from everybody else's. Yep. Most people go straight vodka. Pinnacle is a good vodka to use because it's cheap, but it's not as kind of nasty tasting as some of the, some of them taste almost like an Everclear. We didn't want that, but you don't want a lot of taste to it. So Pinnacle is a good way to go and it's cheap. You don't want to do it with an expensive vodka when you're making Maybe, something like yeah. this. And then here's where we go differently, y'all. We use brandy. So we're gonna use half vodka, half brandy. So we're gonna do a cup of vodka. This is my little thing I like to measure in, like my beaker, because it's just easy to see everything. So it's that- It's not gonna fit in here. Huh? It's not gonna fit in You here. told me to use this. That's because when we were in the lab, we were making half a dose of everything. <laughs> we're gonna need a bigger beer. So we have a cup of vodka, and I'm gonna go in with a cup of brandy. So equal parts. This made such a difference. What we do, y'all, when we're making stuff like this, is we buy the real thing, the carb-filled thing, and then we taste back and forth as we're making. So we'll buy, like, Thank you, lab <laughs> assistant. Okay, we'll buy these little mini bottles because we don't want a big bottle no. of a carb-filled amaretto no. that we're never going to drink. Plus it's expensive. Plus it's expensive. <laughs> so we buy these little guys and we put it in a little sherry glass. Yeah, it cute. really is. Anyways, we, we put a little glasses. tiny bit, not a whole shot, just like a, a sip in, and then we make ours. <laughs> and then we taste back and forth. And that, that's how we figure it out. And we want it to taste as close to this as possible. And we found adding the brandy made a huge difference. Instead of like taking a shot or a sip of it and hit, having that heat hit your throat, like, <clears throat> like you can't hardly handle it because of the strength of the vodka, the brandy helps cut that. So thank you, Jason. He went ahead and put this in the bottle. This is the bottle we're gonna make it in. So that's a cup of each of those things. And now we're gonna take our um, 
what is this called? Our syrup. We're gonna pour our syrup slowly into here. I don't think this is gonna fit either, honey. I don't know, it should have fit in a fifth. I don't know. Hey, you just don't have to say we're Hot Mess Express. And we All right, y'all, if you're not new to us, you know I'm the Hot Mess Express. My meal preps are a hot mess half the time. Yeah, we thought this jar would be big enough. It doesn't seem so. So we're gonna switch to another jar. When we were making this, another thing we do when we're testing things is we make miniature batches. This is a full batch. When we're testing things, we make miniature batches. So we forgot how much space we were actually gonna need. So I do have a little bit of this syrup left and we definitely don't wanna miss out on that. So we are gonna put this in here. And then all you do at this point is you're gonna add some almond flavoring and some vanilla. Now, you want to get the best quality that you can get of this. You want a really good vanilla extract and a really good almond extract because that's what's flavoring your amaretto, right? You want that really good almond flavor. So this Nielsen Massey, I don't even know if that's how you say it, but it's a really good, really good quality. It's not cheap, but you know, it'll last you a while. It's not like you're gonna run through this amaretto oh, no. quickly, or at least I wouldn't. We'll have it for a long time. So how much of this do I need to remind me? That is the two almond tablespoons. two tablespoons. Give me my little, where did my funnel go? Oh. I'm not done with that. Gotcha. Oh my gosh, y'all. Okay, so we're gonna take two tablespoons of this almond. One, two, oh my gosh. It smells, smells so good, so good. And then, this is vanilla that I brought back from Mexico. It's a really, really, really good vanilla. Alternately, if you wanted to make this a longer process, you could put in a couple of vanilla beans and let it sit in, a, in the dark for a few weeks and get vanilla flavor. But we but feel this like is ready to drink. this is ready to drink immediately. It's a five minute process to throw this together if we weren't a hot mess. Vanilla, we're doing two teaspoons. If you want more vanilla, you can obviously do more vanilla, but we want the almond to, in, in an amaretto, what you're really tasting is the almond. The vanilla is like the back note, not a front note. So you wanna make sure that you're using a really good quality of both, but you're gonna use much more almond than you're gonna use uh, vanilla. And then you're just gonna shake it up. Yep. Where's the tap? So Jason's just gonna shake it up and that's it. It's done. It is ready, ready to drink. drink. That is a less than five minute process. Even when you screw it up. Even when you mess <laughs> up, y'all. Yeah, even when you mess it up. It's gonna be delicious Like though. this seriously is the easiest to throw together thing that I've made right. in the cocktail world. Like hands down, so easy. So if you All love right. amaretto, you are in luck. So, now what we're gonna do is take our amaretto and Jason's gonna show you a few different drinks that you could make with it. If you're already an amaretto lover, maybe you already know what your favorite drink is that you're gonna use it for, and if you do, tell us down below what are you gonna use this for, because we would love to know. All right, we've cleaned up a little bit, because y'all, I can't handle all the mess. So we've cleaned up a little bit. First thing we're gonna do is make an amaretto sour, but you know, if you know me, I have to put a little twist on it. So we are making an amaretto sour into like a fall special drink by using my cinnamon simple syrup. My cinnamon simple syrup recipe is in our cookbook. We have a low carb cocktail book and we would love for you to check it out. It's always down below for sale. And this cinnamon simple syrup is probably one of my favorite simple syrups that I've made and it is so perfect for fall. You can put it in your coffee, you can put it in all kinds of alcoholic drinks. Anyways, it's super, super yummy. It's very, very cinnamon and very, I used a lot of the dark sugars when I made this too. It's almost like a Demerara type yeah. flavor. A typical one would be with standard simple syrup. In that case, we would probably use Swoon or you could make your own yeah. with the Allulose. But we made it that way, and then I thought, I remembered that we had this in the fridge and told them to try so it with better. this. Yeah, so much better. All right, let's make it. Okay, let's make yeah. It. Let's All do right. it. We've gotten this far and not made any alcoholic beverages. So, oh, no, that's alcohol. So okay. for the sour, you know, I like to use the one ounce of lemon, 0.75 of simple syrup. I switch it for the amaretto sour because of the sweetness oh, of the amaretto. Yeah. You want it to be a little bit more sweet in the right. drink. So we're gonna do 0.75 of the lemon juice. And if you're new to us, we love this Italian volcano, 100% organic lemon juice. 
It is so good. Typically, I would say always use fresh lemons and limes and any kind of citrus, but I love this one. I can't tell the difference. It's not cheap, but it's handy. We're going to go with a whole ounce of the cinnamon simple oh syrup. Oh my gosh, that smells so good, y'all. This has been difference. in my fridge for over probably two months now, and it is so cinnamony. So cinnamony, because I did leave a cinnamon stick in there, so it just gets better and better. All right, now an amaretto sour, you want to make it with rye whiskey as well. A lot of people leave that out, but you definitely want the rye whiskey. This is half an ounce of rye whiskey. We always have to have our little spin on things, right. but I would definitely use the rye whiskey. Just half an ounce is all you need. And then we're looking at an ounce and a half of amaretto. We're, we've switched to the one we made previously just because Because this one is cool. a little warm still. Yeah. But same thing. Like I said, we were making smaller batches while we were figuring it out. So we have this little mini version and now we, now we have a big guy. We'll have to gift it to somebody maybe. All right, and you know it's not a sour if... Egg white. You don't have an egg white. Egg white. Some people make amaretto sours without the egg white, but Jason doesn't... Some people are wrong. Jason says they're wrong. It does give it that really, really nice presentation. It's and hard to smile when you shake it off. Yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah. y'all, we did try and do an egg substitute. We tried the um, chickpea <laughs> juice. What is that called? I forget the name of it. What's that called, Joe? What I don't know. The, the bean Aquafaba. Juice. Aquafaba. Is that right? Yeah. We tried that. I could smell and taste the chickpea. Mm. Yeah, no. I'd rather just skip. If I was not able to have an egg, I'd rather have it without the egg than with the... Yeah. That was a no get for us. No -get. And if you want to see us experiment with that, I will leave this linked up above. It was our low carb sours video. It was probably the funniest video we put out in a really long time. We had so many mistakes, so many mess ups that I almost didn't post it, but I just had to because it's hilarious. So y'all go watch that if you need a laugh. All right, I like my amaretto sours over ice. They're so sweet, you drink them so fast, they're not gonna get watered down. Plus the chill, I think, just is better with all the flavors. Okay. It's good. Mm. Like you smell that almond, like the amaretto immediately. And then when you drink it, you get that cinnamon mm. too. It It's delightful. It, it's really this is good. Our, this is our Amaretto salad recipe. This is it's not our cinnamon. This, this is, is this our is standard our amaretto, standard amaretto salad. Salad. Yes, it exactly. Is. If you're gonna have one at our house, this is how we're gonna make it. All right. The next drink that we're gonna oh, make delicious. is an Italian margarita, and y'all know I am all there for the tequila and the margaritas. And Jason found a way to make an Italian margarita using amaretto, and it's quite delicious. So stay tuned. Now, do you want salt with this? It needed the salt. Need, okay, I need and it. truthfully, I, I almost always say yes to salt for a margarita, but this one, I don't, I don't really think it needed the salt. I might have even sh like you could sugar the rim. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know about it. I didn't know what we you wanted could to do there. Probably brown sugar the yeah, rim. Yeah, like I didn't use know. Use the sucre and gold or something if so. you wanted to. All right, so this is the Italian margarita. It's, it's a little bit low carb, gimmicky, I think, because you're really supposed to use like blood orange orange juice, you know, like the really blood rich, orange juice. blood orange juice. So we've got two options that we found we like. This is the sparkling ices, of course. Um, which one is this? This orange is- Orange mango. Orange mango, which isn't my favorite because I just don't like mango, but I think it does have a really good flavor. Plus mango, if you're keto, you're low carb, you don't really get to eat mango, do you? So it does give you a little bit of flavor and the, the nuttiness of the amaretto brings it out very nicely. If you don't like mango, this is the caffeine one with the passion fruit in it. I'm 50-50 on them. You can go either way depending. We're gonna I'd rather use... not add caffeine to my alcohol. Yeah, we're not personally. gonna, yeah. I know some people are really into that, but it's not my thing. Yeah, but so we're gonna do the orange mango, okay. but I just, we had both of those options. I don't think either of them are like, perfect ideal, but I think for the low carb version, you will be satisfied with them if you want an Italian margarita. All right, so it's our standard margarita recipe, pretty much, a little bit of an adaptation on it. We're only gonna go with an ounce of French fresh lime juice. Normally we would go with an ounce and a half, but I'm trying to cut the lime a little bit so that we can play off the orange because it just plays so well with the almond. And if you're not concerned with carbs, you could totally use blood orange juice. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
I'm gonna go an ounce and a half of tequila. Again, I like to make our uh, margaritas strong. We would normally go two ounces here, <clears throat> but we're going an ounce and a half because, because of the amaretto. Because of the amaretto. Well, but usually you would use triple set. But I would only use half an ounce of triple uh, set. I want to use okay. a whole ounce of, of okay. amaretto, All okay? Right. And we just found that like that just brings out the nuttiness of the of the almond a little bit more. Yeah. And then we're gonna go two ounces of sparkling, sparkling ice. ice. So normally it's an ounce and a half of fresh lime, ounce and a half of sparkling ice lime. I'm trying Nine to bring days. out the tastes of of the special ingredients a little bit okay. this time. Does that make sense? Yep. And our we have a bunch of different margarita recipes in our cookbook as well, y'all. Our standard one and then a bunch of variations, but not this one. And anything that we're showing you in this show will be listed down below with exact ingredients for you of how to do it. All right, so we're not gonna solve, I'm just gonna shake it right now. I am so impressed with this one right here. Like that cinnamon makes such a difference. Mm. Smells like a margarita. It does smell like a margarita. I'd still give it a little swipe of lime around it. And, and it, I, I still it. think it probably would be great with like a rim of the super and gold, the brown sugar. But you didn't like the salt. When I we didn't like it. the salt with this one, which is strange because I am definitely a margarita salt girl. But this is a definitely a like a big variation. Yeah. It's really good though. It really is. It's very refreshing. You definitely get the margarita vibes for sure, but that almond still comes through. It's not a super strong amaretto because of all of the other flavors competing, but it's delicious. It's very good. I think you will like this. So we made our amaretto and we're not huge amaretto drinkers. I love an amaretto sour, but you can only drink so many of them, right? Yeah. So we're sitting around trying to figure out what drinks to make and what, of course, am I going to try to make out of a martini? A martini, right? Jason's so this is always got to try and make a martini, y'all. When I make a martini with gin, what's Erica always like now? Use the blue gin. Use the blue gin. This is going to be our blue almond okay. martini. Well, first, this gin is clear normally. <laughs> this is Lock and Union gin, American Dry gin. We absolutely love this yes. bottle. Oh. But I only had this much left. All right, what I do to make this, you can do it with any kind of clear alcohol. You take this and you put some of these organic butterfly pea flowers in it. Literally 20 minutes, even less, oh, yeah. if you're in a hurry. Almost instantly. It, it almost instantly changes it to this gorgeous blue purple color. So, so pretty. And it doesn't really change, the, doesn't flavor change the flavor at all. It really doesn't. So that's just a little trick. And I just think it makes it, it pretty. So and pretty. you know I like a pretty drink. So that's the story here. This is not normally this color. No, okay. no. We love Lock and Union. All right. So we're making our martini, gin, uh, vermouth, amaretto. Pretty simple, right? So we're going two ounces of our gin. Do you want to make this in a pitcher or no? All right, y'all. Mm. Our little lab assistant sent this flying over. Yes, martinis are generally stirred, not shaken. Correct. Is that correct? correct? And he was getting ready to shake it up, but he meant to do it in this. Yes. So, oh, here we go. Here we go. Pretend that didn't happen. Two ounces of Lock and Union. I, American Gin, love, love, love this best gin we've ever had, hands down. I can't say it enough. I really can't. We really do right. enjoy this gin quite a bit. All right, what did I, what did I decide on amaretto on this? An ounce, I think? Um, You wrote one ounce. Yes, yeah. ounce of amaretto here. Okay. And then we're gonna go with the vermouth. It depends on how dry you want it to be. I, I'm just going to do a quarter of an ounce because I think that way you still get the flavor of the gin and the amaretto. You can go more, you can go up to an ounce and a half, or to an ounce and a half. Ooh, Don't go an ounce and a half. That would be a hefty drink. <laughs> you can go half an ounce on it if you want, but I found the quarter is just a little more delightful. Hi, Hazel. Hi, baby girl. All right. Our dog feels very left out right now, my baby. These are not for you. How pretty is that, y'all? Like, seriously. You could totally do this with just the clear gin and skip the yeah, butterfly right. pea step, but it's just so pretty, and we had it, so why not? What are you doing? Just giving a little, little lemon rim. You gotta tell people what you're doing. I don't know, man. I do it all the time. He's using a little lemon peel that he we just peeled off. 
and wiping around the rim because when you smell it and drink it, it's nice to have that. And we really went back and forth on do we want to garnish this because it's so pretty, but we decided the I yellow made looks a, nice. I made a little yellow rose, y'all, with my lemon peel. And I, I'm going to try and set it on there. Isn't yeah, that pretty? Perfect. So Beautiful. pretty. I'm sure it's going to fall the minute I pick it up, yeah, but yeah. it's really pretty. Look at you. Oh, perfect. It's like you. perfect. That's how it was supposed to fall. This is really good, y'all. <laughs> I am not a martini drinker myself, generally. <laughs> it's but, good. but this is really delicious. The Amaretto makes it delicious. It's, it's good. so good. So, this is what we made tonight. We wanted to show y'all how simple amaretto is because so many people ask for it. So there's our amaretto and here's three things that we came, or that Jason came up with to share with y'all. But there are so many ways to use amaretto. I would love for y'all to tell us down below what your favorite drink for amaretto is that you're gonna use this with. Cause seriously y'all, you can make this in five minutes. It, it doesn't get any easier. Yep. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. We hope you had fun, and we will see you again next Friday. Bye, y'all. Be blessed. Go Brandy and your amaretto.